All right, we're recording now. So cool. So I want to introduce you to the um, layer styles. Essentially, they're styles that you can add to your layers. Kind of self-explanatory. But let me get into more depth. Um, you have a variety of styles you can use, and I'm going to be applying them for this particular one to our um, text layers. So I'm going to create a text one here. And we'll just choose a font that is workable. Um, I'll pick one that seems to work well. Uh, this one. So my color is white because up here, my properties tell me that my text is white. So. Like I said before, for every single tool, um, when you look at the top part and this top bar here is all the properties of that tool. So here we have a color that says uh, hello. And I'll just change it to a smooth and I'll make the font size a lot bigger. Right? So just to show you how some of these layer styles work, uh, one, we click the FX tab here. That's where you can add your layer styles. And if you click on it, you'll see a bunch of different options. Uh, drop shadow, inner shadow, auto glow, etc. If you're using another version of Photoshop, you might see them in a different order. And you might have additional features if you have the latest version where you can actually stack multiple of the same um, effect on each other. So let's look at the drop shadow element for a bit. I'm going to choose drop shadow here. All right? If you look at the drop shadow, you will see it drops a shadow. And you can always change the color of that shadow. So if you wanted a red shadow or maybe some other color, you can choose how much you want. And you can also choose the distance. Right? Not only can you manipulate the distance and direction here, but you can actually go back over here into the interface and literally just drag it around to where you feel comfortable. All right, so let's say I like that and I want to lower the opacity to something else. I can do something like that for my drop shadow. There's also different contours you could use as well. So that determines the quality. So you can choose anti-alias 1 for the first part. That gives you smoother looking colors. If you look at the contours though, you have a whole bunch of different contours. Essentially, a contour is like a fall off. Let me show you how that works. So if I change this contour right now, you're going to be seeing that you have a high point on the inside, it's dark, and it comes back up. Right? If I were to change this, right, you probably see something else happening. If I press OK. Nope, nothing changed. Oh, here we go. This is what controls. So high point, low point, or how blurry it is. probably even make it come in a little further or like so right so this is how bright it is this is how dark it is you want to bring out thinness of one side i can always do that probably a little confusing right now so we just move on <laughs> you can always change the contour depending on what you want using custom ones or just you stick with the regular linear one which gives you that blurry edge you can always change the size which is how much blur you want or the spread, which is how sharp you want it to be, right? So that's size and spread. So if you want blur, increase the size. If you just want a simple one there, you can always just choose that. That's drop shadow. You also have inner shadow. For this, I like probably have to change the color of the, the font. So let me just change that really quick. Um, use my text tool here, just highlight my font change to something like uh, probably light red <coughs> mm -hmm. so let's go back here back in my uh, drop shadow I uh, had one before if you want an inner shadow you can always put one in there by default it gives you some basic settings uh, so like distance as well so if you want to look like there's a hole in the page just use the inner shadow and you can change the distance how much choke value is how much is gonna come on the inside and how much size again is how blurry you want it to be. 
right? So if you have a high choke value, it looks like that. The increase the size, however, it looks more blurry. Kind of like it works like the drop shadow, except it works on the inside. Then you have an outer glow. Probably best seen if I had a dark background. <laughs> but I'll just change the color of this outer glow to something else. So you can see a little more clearly. So I'm going to change it to red. And if I change it from screen to a different blending mode like normal, you can see it works kind of like a, a glow. Right? You have different ways you could work with it. Contour thing pops up again. And you also have range and how much jitter you have. Right? Next, inner glow. Inner glow works just like outer glow, except on the inside, on the outside. So I do an inner glow like so, and I increase the size, it gets a little more blurry. But if I increase the choke value, right, you get something more like that. Right? And you can also make the source either the edge, right, or coming from the center. So it really depends on what you want to do. Then you have the bevel and emboss, which makes it look beveled or embossed. When I first started Photoshop, I used to bevel and emboss everything. Every single thing. If I drew a tree, bevel it. If I drew water, bevel it. <laughs> and then, you know, times change from being all realistic looking to more flat. So you can have to just transition with that. You can always change the direction as well, down or up, and the depth how chiseled it is. Technique with a smooth or chisel hard or chisel soft. Right? And you can always change it from inner bevel to outer bevel if you want to. Where it's going to be beveled from the outside. Then you also have things like emboss and pillow emboss. Uh, and you can even increase the size of that pillow emboss right there. You get something more like that. And you can even change the softness of it. Right? Like so. Then you have shading, which controls how the shading looks, depending on where the light direction is pointing. And you can either use global light or not. Whenever you choose to use global light, each of these settings that have something like an angle for the light is actually going to be manipulating those. So if I change this, it will almost automatically change the bevel and stuff for that. So the global light just works with all the other layers. So even though you have bevel and emboss, you also have contours. How you want to contour it, I'm going to stick with one of the more simple ones. The inner, let's, let's just go back to default stuff. Um, depth is too much. Yeah. And I'll just change the light source to be like this. And contour changes how it's contoured. So I could put grooves in there, right? Different grooves in there, like so. One really high point and another really high point. Or I could do one low point, one high point in the middle, another low point. It really depends on how you want to contour it. Really? See? Whether all the way at the edge or from a particular point. Really up to you. The last one is texture. Texture adds a bit of texture to your um, bevel. Right? Scale and depth is there. Right? Snap to origin, etc. So you can always add texture to your bevel and emboss. Then you have satin, which gives it more of a satiny look satiny you know we change the angles right and in the blending modes as well so if you don't like this one you can always change that you can always even change the color of the blending mode so if you want to use green or something it'd be all weird not that using green is weird not weird at all you can always play with the settings to get whatever results you want next you have color overlay which works like an overlay it really just changes the color of the whole thing so you could either just completely solidify a layer with one color or you could change the blending mode and get it to work out however you want it to work out. Yes, yeah, so many options. Then you have the gradient overlay tool. By the way, these things stack, so it's not like it's 1-1. One, one. If you notice I have a color overlay, but when I put on color overlay, 
let's say I have a color of red. I've changed, and normally it would be normal, and I have a gradient overlay, but if I want to see the color through the gradient overlay, I have to change the blending mode of the one above it. So I'll choose multiply or even something else, like this, color dodge, and gradient overlay is there. And just like we do the drop shadow, you can move around your gradient. And you can always change the scale of it. Right? And the angle of it. And the style of it. Whether you want it to be an angular gradient or you want it to be a linear, radial, diamond, anything. Next is pattern overlay, which puts a pattern on your color. And the last one is the stroke, which adds a stroke to everything. Right? So if you use any combination of these, you can get very different results. So I'm going to show you one of them. Let's say you want a metallic looking text. Um, what font is it? What font is it? Hmm. What do we have here? What do we have here? Hmm. Oh, Luna is nice. Or not. Where's the old English font? Yes. Ellis. So we have this one. It's a uh, black text. Very boring. Very, very quaint. All right, so let's say we want to make it look more appealing. Right, first of all, I'm going to apply to our background here just a moderate gradient. Probably I'll use a, a color here and a darker color here. And I use my gradient tool just to give it a background of a radial gradient and just do something like this just to get something. Right? Then we'll have this L here. And I want to make it look a particular way. So one, I can probably start with a gradient overlay and make it bigger, just like so. Right? Just a smidge. Lower the opacity a bit so I can keep the contrast there. Then I'm going to put in a bevel and emboss just to get it to be more beveled. An inner shadow could probably do it some justice. Then we want some satin in there. Just to make it look more satiny. Very metallic, very, very. Mm. And I'm going to just uh, play with the size a bit. And lower the distance a bit. Let's play with the, the gradient. So instead of using black and white, right? I'm going to probably try in something else. I'll probably use a, a red. So I can click on one of the stops here at the bottom. This one controls color. This one controls opacity. So I'll choose the color to be something like a red. Right. Some of it of a red. And, uh, and white. Then let's put in an inner glow. Just to get the edges a bit more ready. <coughs> and we'll change the opacity slightly and change the screen. Let's see what results we get. We'll use color dodge here, giving you a little more blah. If you want to look like glass, or let's say you want it to look like glass. Right? Notice we had the color black before, right? Right. For the, if you want to look like glass or more, you can always choose to lower the fill opacity. And what that's going to do after you lower it, it's going to change. It's actually going to remove the original black we had as the background and replace it with whatever we have here. So right now, if I move this over there, it will become that particular color. So we can always play with more options here, like the outer glow, perhaps. 
change the size and change it to something else like have a maybe a glow with vivid light or dissolve whichever one we want to use color overlay not really necessary right now but we could do this I'll get rid of the outer glow I put back on the color overlay and change it so it looks more like that because I like the way that looks I probably increase the depth or soften it a bit more increase the size and change the depth to have something more like that. All right? Let me just give you some background. So let's say I want the L to rest on something. So I'll choose um, wood. There we go. Something like that. Or better, something like this. Oh, by the way, Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S, is a nice website that contains a lot of free stock images for free. Right? So it's free for free. And most times they don't ask to do any attributions or you just have the images there and just, poof, just throw it on there. This image is too large. All right, here's what I'll do. I'll just be cheap about it. Oh, no, pixels, no. All right, let's use this one. Or not. You know what? Let's just pick a regular one. Just pick one. Copy. I'm right-clicking, copy image. Paste into Photoshop. It's there. Kind of want it bigger. Right now, I'm just ignoring the same rule I told you guys. Don't scale up. And I'll just change the opacity. Not the opacity, the blending mode. To something else. So that way, I get something looking more like that. No, that doesn't work. This works. Sort of. But we need a drop shadow. So I'm going to duplicate my effects here. Drop my shadow in there. Choose how much size it's going to have. Notice this kind of transparent. Can you see the, the text coming through there? The, the, the wooden texture is coming through. Yeah, so it's more like glass because some of our opacity is low enough. Example like this. And you can get something looking like that. By the way, if you've created something and you like the way it looks, you can always just choose new style. Uh, glass thing. Press OK. And press OK. So if I take something else, let's say I decide, you know, I wouldn't mind drawing in this particular style. It looks a little cool. So what I could then do is start drawing. That looks really bad. I'm going to press F5 to manipulate my brush. Take some spacing out. Get rid of my transfer. And do some shape dynamics with the pen pressure. And what I can do, if I look inside my styles tab... And if you can't see, you go to Windows and choose Styles. It pops up. And usually the last thing that you created will be at the bottom. So I'm going to just throw this on this layer. And whenever I draw, it'll draw it in that particular style. Bleah. Then you can do some stuff like that. Right? But that's how styles work. You just add it to different things. Right? So if I were to decide, say, hey, I'm going to add a style to this wooden one. I'm going to choose color overlay. And let's say I don't want it to actually be red. I kind of want the wood to look red. So instead of using a normal blend mode, I'll just come over here to color. Color. Or I can choose hue. And it make that thing the same color as this. Or if you want it to be blue. Or green, maybe yellow, or orange, or black and white. And you just press OK. The cool thing is that you can always hide your layers 
and let's play with the effects right so 